assuming that your horse is sound and physically can handle the work, you know, where to start? You know, I think most people, they'll, go, they'll be on course and let's say, I can't slow down the canter. So then when they work on it, they go to the canter. Uh, it's not really the right way to go about it because that's harder. You're going farther down the line. For me, I, I just start with trying to halt them from the walk um, because the mechanics are still the same. You know, you're still adjusting your seat, using your hands and your legs to ask them to halt and not to just slam on the brakes, but just come down to the halt while maintaining their body shape. And one of the reasons why that is important to start in the walk, not just because it's easier, is you can do it a ton of times. You know, just over and over and over and over and over again. You know, at the canter, you can't canter for an hour straight. But you can walk and halt for an hour straight if you want. And you can, you can then try things out. You know, you can adjust your seat a little bit different or your leg a little bit different to see what is working and what is not. And if, you, if it works at the walk to the halt, It'll generally work from the trot to the walk, trot to the halt. And so it's a great platform for you to just see what works. Um, and your horse is calmer. You know, you're not going from a big canter to a small canter. You know, that's, that's down the line. Start at the walk. And what you really are looking for is, you know, you're going from a nice working walk just to step down to a halt. Slam on the brakes. It's not really what you're going for. You just want to come down to the halt. And then when you, and then after you can do that, then you try the trot. And I would try a, a, a slower trot, a less energetic trot, because again, less is going on. And try what you did from the walk to the halt at the trot. And then I would go from a, a extended trot to a collected trot. And then from there, I'd go from extended trot all the way down into the halt but I wouldn't do it in one go. You know, I wouldn't start from big trot to slow, uh, to halt. I'd go big trot to slower trot. Um, and again, you're going for compression. You know, you're not just trying to slow down. You're trying to compress the body. You're trying to load the power. Um, Cause like we said earlier, you need to get to the base of the jump with, which, with enough power to jump it. You might physically get to the right place, but in the wrong canter. Um, and then once you can do that, then I'd go into the canter. And it should, what you're trying to build is understanding. Both you're understanding what you need to do and the horse is understanding what you're asking. First, you need to understand what your horse is doing. And when you two understand each other, then it's so much easier because the horse knows what you're asking. And because their sound is strong enough, they're capable of doing it. So it's not just understanding, it's being capable of it. Um, and it shouldn't be force. It should be, you make a movement to indicate what you want to do and, and it happens. Similar to turning, it shouldn't be to turn. It's not fun if you have to yank one of the reins just to get them to go to the left. It should just be, you understand that you're going to the left. You know, the horse underst you understand how to ask and I understand, and the horse understands how to do the movement that I'm asking. Thank you.